Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Aaron Tony, and I'm gonna be taking you guys through some more kicking variations. So last time we did a whole kicking workout, but we also did a really good warm up. So if you haven't done it yet, I think you should go ahead and click on the link in the description, follow along with that, and then once you're done with that, come on back here. All right, so. If you're done with that, what we're going to do today is we're going to first review the first three basic kicks that we did. And that was the front kick, the roundhouse kick, and the side kick. So we're going to warm up with those three kicks first. So we're going to start here in our normal orthodox position, boxer stance, and we're going to do five front kicks and then we're going to switch. So we're starting out really slow, just warm up the legs. One, two, Three, four, and five. Switch. Five more on this side. One, two, three, four, and five. Good. Switch again. Now we're going to do roundhouse kicks. Here we go. One. What I want you to do this time, last time, last week's video, we were doing round and bringing it down. What I want you to get into the habit of doing, this is going to work on your balance and your core. Get into the habit of kicking, place it right back behind you. It's going to really straighten up your legs. So let's do five like that again. One, two, three, four, five. Switch. What's really important too, a lot of people, what they do is when they kick, when they start kicking, they don't know what to do with their hands. What I like to talk about is the natural progression of what your hands do. So if you saw when I was kicking on this side, what do my hands naturally want to do? They do that. They don't do this. They don't stay here. Why? If you look over on this camera or this camera here, look at what happens when I do that. There's nothing. There's no hip shift. There's no core. There's no nothing. Let your hands naturally drift over. Sometimes it's here. And sometimes it's there. You'll see Thai guys a lot of times when they kick, they go ahead and keep a monitor hand up. And when they switch, they'll go ahead and bring the opposite hand up. Why? Because you don't want to get hit in the face. So as they kick, bam, and then they drop it down. Sometimes they'll kick, bam, and bring it right back. So I want you guys to get in a real good habit of knowing where your hands are when you're kicking. So switch. Sorry, I was rambling. Now we're going to do five on the left side. Roundhouse kick again. One, two, three, four, and five. Switch it up again. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the side kick. Same thing. Take the kick, throw it out, bring it right back behind you. Five, each side. One, two, Three, four, five, switch. One, two, three, four, and five. And bring it back. Switch again. Okay. So those three kicks were just to review what we did last week as a warm up. What we're really going to do today is start going through some other variations of kicking. So today we're going to work on the hook kick, the spin hook kick, or spin kick, and then we're going to do another two. We're going to do our crescent kicks, we're going to go out to in and in to out, and last but not least, the axe kick. So we're going to start with the hook kick. The hook kick is very interesting. There's a couple different ways to do it. One way that I like to start is with the back leg. What you do is you're going to pivot, just like we do the front kick, bring the leg up, but with chamber out. And what happens is the hook is going to travel from A to B. So when you come up in your chamber and you throw, that's what it should, should be. It's almost a fake out. It's almost like you went down and you went high. Okay? So we're gonna do five of those. Rear leg, hook kick, Right leg, five, go. 
One, two, three, four, and five. And switch. Rear leg again. One, two, three, four, and five. And switch. All right, pretty good. Now, the spin kick. Spin kick is very interesting. There's a lot of different ways to throw a spin kick. One way that I like to throw a spin kick is more, how do you say, more of an arc. It's more for theatrics. Typically, when you throw a spin kick, your legs should chamber just like the hook kick, which is why I teach the hook kick first, then the spin kick, because you just went through the proper chamber up here. But the chamber starts back here, turning. So with the spin kick, you turn, chamber, flick. Now typically, when you want to devastate this kick, what you do is when you throw and you flick, you're gonna go ahead and lean down. So meaning when I hit, bam, I wanna take the person's head off. If I want to, say I want to finish the kick and I wanna look more upright, like for film, what I do is I throw and I continue the arc and I bring it all the way back down. Right back down. So we're gonna work on mainly the devastating power of the spin kick. So for everybody right now, I want you to throw this kick like you're trying to take someone's head off. So you're gonna throw it, place it out, hold it, and get, get it down. So five, ready? One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Five on the other side, switch. Same thing, make sure you chamber, flick, and out. One, two, three, four, and five. Good, so those two kicks are very important. There's a couple different ways to go ahead and play with them. So. I kind of want to break those, those two down first and talk about sort of the pros and cons of some of those sort of techniques. So with the hook kick, what's really good about the hook kick is it's kind of one of those sneak attacks. Front kick comes directly from here. You usually, you probably in MMA, you still can't really read it, it's, which is why it's one of the most effective kicks. But the hook kick is very interesting because whether you're trying to do it in combat or a movie, it looks very elusive. So when it comes up in turns, you don't know where it's coming from. So and sometimes you'll drop fake and go for one. But that's just another variation. The other variation of the hook kick that I want to practice is the lead leg. Lead leg is good because it's already there. It's already there, it's ready. All you do is lean back and throw. So, you lean back, throw, already up. So, that's another variation of that. Now, something else to do with the hook kick is the sliding hook kick. So again, shuffling, moving inward and outward. So what we do with that is, we use the lead leg, we're still, of course, going to, we're gonna push forward, and as we push, we step back with the right, and then we chamber, and then throw. So all together, should look like that. What we're going for is power, so really work on when you shuffle, really try and devastate quick, quickness. Bah! That's what we're going for, okay? So with that said, back to the spin kick. So spin kick's one of my favorite kicks. I, I think it's one of those kicks that you can make it look really, really good if, if you understand the proper timing and mechanics. One of the ways I like to throw it is sort of swinging the leg. I like to do what's called a pipe. I pipe the leg and hang it around, 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 and 
then I bring it back behind me. So that's what we're gonna go and play with. This sort of piking and hooking the leg. Now, <laughs> this isn't a very good technique to use <laughs> if you're kind of fighting, but it's a, one of those things that looks really aesthetically cool to me. So play around with it, do what you want. But we're gonna go ahead and do a variation of this, so watch this. That's for the swing. Once again, the setup. Notice how the leg, and almost hooks so high, so low, that I go extra high. So be careful where you, you're kicking. For me, I'm about five foot 10, five out of 11 really, but I usually can throw this kick with someone who's like six foot five because of the, my long legs. But for this, I'm gonna drop the kick a little bit lower, so watch what happens. I'm gonna hang the leg, and swing right through camera's lens. So work on that pike, hit, boom, right through there. Okay? Um, let's work on crescent kick. Crescent kick's one of those kicks I feel like people just kind of glaze over. No one wants to talk about it. No one wants to do it. But it's a kick that's honestly one of the one of the foundations of everything. Whether it be talking about doing tricky, whether it's like shirt and twist, or like you want to work work on anything from box cutters, or anything that that's anything that it ends up where the leg is swinging. Very important to have a proper crescent kick <laughs> for your 540s as well. Crescent kick. We like like to say that typically in, 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 in Taekwondo, when you do a 540, technically you're supposed to turn the hip over. I would say about 80% of the trickers and martial artists out there use a crescent kick approach, which is fine, but it also means you should be practicing it. That's right. So we're going to work on the crescent kick. We're going to go out to in. Very important. No one likes to do this, but we're going to do it. Five. We start in this stance, orthodox stance, up and down. Four more. Three, four, and five. Switch. And this kick is also used as an active variation. So we're gonna talk about that later. So it's a good thing that we're doing crescent kicks now because that's gonna play into one of our last kicks that we're gonna do. But for now, we're gonna switch back to orthodox and you're gonna do crescent in to out, which is a lot easier. I like to do out to in crescent first because it's the one that nobody wants to do. But then you get to in to out and you're like, oh, that's easy, oh yeah. So you're gonna do five of those, ready? And go. One. Two. Keep those legs straight. Three, four, and five. Switch. One, two, three, four, and five. So, really important, we get some more real quick. Like, So, <laughs> if you watch the first video and you stretch, 
you're in the right place. So once again, with the axe kick, what I like to do, and what is properly traditionally done, is when you throw, the kick comes all the way up, and you travel forward. And as you travel forward, you lean back. Why? Because there's some power there, but when you use your glutes as you kick, so when you throw and you squeeze as you kick, there's a lot more power. It's like an ax coming down. So that's what you want to do. You want proper foundation. When you throw, you tomahawk and you bring it straight down. As you come down, lean back. So as we go, we're going to do five. Ready? Go. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Switch. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. So, with that, let's go back to sort of the crescent kick sort of setup with an axe kick in mind. So, when we did the axe kick just now, what did we do? We did this, straight up and down. We're gonna do inside, I'm sorry, outside to inside crescent kick, but we're gonna drop it down like an axe kick. So as you come forward, that's what you're gonna do. It's one really effective variation. You think something's coming from here, but instead, drop it right down in the front. Another way you do it is you go inside to outside. That's one way. You could be chasing somebody, you could go, ah, like that. So, two little variations on the axe kick mixed with crescent kick principles. Good, so we learned hook kick, spin kick, inside outside crescent kick, outside inside crescent kick, and the axe kick. So, with those in mind, you can pause this video and continue to do those. After you're done, come on back, because we're gonna do a couple drills with the first three kicks that we learned from the first video. So, have a pause and then come on back. All right, so now that you're all done with uh, the sort of drills that we did today, let's go ahead and play around with some of the principles that we did in the first video. So we're gonna work on sort of a basic little uh, sort of in place front round variation. One of my favorites that I like to do for film and TV. So always looks fun because you're balancing on one leg, but what's really important is core. Core is very important. When we do this kick, you can do it lead leg or rear leg. But just work on sort of the aesthetics of finding your footing. Place and place. I like to really make sure that when I throw, everything is tight and locked. Okay, same thing on the other side. One, two. Again, one, two. You can even speed it up. But really make sure that each kick is finishing. Don't do this, don't go there. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> it's not good. So if you're really gonna do it, make sure you throw properly. Don't hurt yourself, but really, bah, boom. Some really good, good kickers to watch that do this technique really well are the Lee brothers. I'm sure some of you guys have heard of them. Brian and Andy Lee are some of the most phenomenal kickers. Study them, watch them. They're amazing. Travis, you should have them on at some point. <laughs> guys are amazing, but let's do another one here. So we just did front round. Let's go ahead and try side kick, side kick. This is one I like to do. So from here, if you stand this way, I'll do one this way, I'll do one this way. So side kick, side kick, side kick mid, side kick high. So we're gonna go ankles or maybe we should go knees, <laughs> ankles, not kicking anybody in the ankles. We're gonna go knee or thigh right to the head. So we're gonna go straight here, up to here. So we'll go one, two. Once again, one, two. Let's do the other side now. So mid, high. Really important to lock out. Finish, ba, boom. Always finish your kicks. If your kicks are slow, still finish. Don't be in a rush to finish the kick. There's nothing, 
more infuriating or when you see a technique on screen or anywhere, when you don't finish your technique, finish, lock out, straight, straight. Very, very important. Let's see, one other one that we can do, we're gonna go from the front side, front. So once again, front, that's the side. Let's go, let's go front round. We'll go front round, pop, front. Very easy. Front round, front. Bop, bop, bop. Just like that. Opposite side. Front round, bop. And again.